Yeah. It's that time of year again when I look back at all the release titles to see which one of them snagged my incredibly lauded and highly desired best graphics of the year award. Possibly, maybe not. Yeah. Anyway, with last year's winner setting the benchmark high, as I covered at the time with my in-depth analysis, Ready at Dawn released a generation-defining title in that regard, and even now, it would still duke it out with the top pack here. But the question is which title and team will take this year's trophy and be the top pick across what was another feature-packed and visual banquet of games on console and PC alike. Now, as before, this is an opinion-based subject in many areas, and we'll cover the game's technical, artistic, and stylistic choices in the final delivered package, although the technical aspect is the much more objective side. Now, this always precedes my look ahead of the top 10 titles most anticipated by myself in 2017, and maybe even you, which should be another cracker, and the link will be here or below once ready for your viewing pleasure. Or you can subscribe to be notified once I put up any new work, and these tend to be twice a week at the very least and over the weekend. Now before we hit the 10th entry in this slot we must first acknowledge the fallen comrades who narrowly missed a place in this now extended ranking from last year's top 5. The latest Deus Ex title was a big win for me on many levels and issues and story problems aside it was also visually a very accomplished title. From its composite advancement of pure hair and material shaders in the game, wide open areas and accomplished modern techniques like parallax occlusion mapping, volumetric lighting and a good use of diffuse and specular tones cleaned up with a decent TAA solution presented a vivid view of the future across all platforms. It even snuck in some PS4 Pro dynamic 4K resolution and performance improvements to seal the deal, but ultimately not enough to gain a slot in the top 10. Another title joining in the pro updates and missed entry with an equally distinctive artistic design and flair was the Cortex Conundrum of the Witness, now available for Xbox One owners happily to enjoy after its earlier PC and PS4 release. The game has one of the most striking use of colours seen and it really complements the team's aim and puzzle structure, a vast island to explore that used the environment's light and darkness well within its visual style to play and incorporate into the puzzles themselves. The Microsoft exclusive, you note I never said Xbox One, this is no longer a thing, and Playground Games themselves stuck it into six gear to get here, but just missed the grid. Forza is set in the land down under with expansive open terrain, lapping seashores, sandy beaches and forests, and this game allows you to drive through it all with a huge collection of vehicles. Yes, the PC release may have a few issues, but it doesn't need that much of a machine to run and enjoy, and it never dampens the impact it has on your eyes. The range of environments you can enjoy, super clean IQ, rock solid performance combine into by far the team's best title yet, and possibly the best open world racer ever made. It just never made the grain here I'm afraid, but visually this is a cut above pretty much every other driving game out there, and the fact that it mixes all this up within such an open world and dynamic racing is a real testament to the team and the resource they used here. Unraveled from a small team in Sweden and picked up earlier in development by EA is another title that really just narrowly missed out on a slot in my top 10. Remarkably stylistic, very well integrated and an amazing new slant on the platforms that many of us grew up enjoying. Presented in a modern package and engine with some incredible material shaders in the game. This is small at heart but anything but in production. And this is where things got slightly more complicated and delayed this video by around a week due to one game slipping in and pushing my next game just out of the top 10. This was a true beauty of a game and even though it does have strong technical touches from its use of morph target animation, clustered AI and scrolling scripts, strong colour tones, dynamic shadows that are not as captivating as the previous journey they took us on, in my opinion, an appreciably more impressive display on offer that merges art, sound and technology impeccably with a tale of underwater adventure. I covered all these and more at the time with my analysis video and web article, and if you have the PS4 Pro it is further enhanced, and I'll be covering that shortly. I mean shortly. So we get to the meat of the matter, which is what did make it into my list and why, starting with the number 10, and my first and only cop out I'm afraid, as it is a photo finish of two. The Tomorrow Children and The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine. Now The Tomorrow Children is possibly one of, if not the most technically packed titles in this list, that snatched the last grid of uh, two. 
It certainly has the most proficient real-time global illumination solution yet, incorporating three bounces of light through a ray-marked voxel solution that delivers in addition to accomplished art and topology geometry and post-processing, a game that comes as close to looking like a real stop-motion movie ever. The burning red sunsets, bright yellow suns or pale blue moonlight that move throughout play allowed by its mixture of real-time solutions is always impressive and mesmerising equally. Image quality and scale is improved further by environments being destructible that still react to the light. Real-time reflections are also handled with the A-formationed Raymarch method, solving camera view and culling issues. They also rendered at almost identical quality as the source reflection. Subsurface scattering, AO capsule shadows, light penetration or emissive objects just adds to a huge list of technical feats that are polished off with extensive use of GPU asynchronous compute, maximising the host machine's resource that we're making the cooling fan work for its money. You can learn more about the game from my analysis earlier this year. The second of the top 10, sorry, you could argue, why is it even here? It's a 2015 title. Well, yes it is. But Blood and Wine was the last of two expansion packs the game had. Now this launched in 2016 and incorporated many updates and rendering improvements to the engine that I covered at the time. But these changes refined and enhanced the game across PC and consoles alike. Now performance improved even though they also increased draw distance, shadows and object detail by batching calls together and fundamentally improving their skills and engine for this new generation. Motion blur was vastly ramped up and helped smooth out the game's animation and movement, but the titanic colour tone shift was the biggest transformation, offering up a brighter, more stylized view of Geralt's world in Toussaint that expanded the visual punch it offers, with convincing water effects sweeping countryside and realistic time of day and weather, with this expansive kingdom all flowing through real-time cinematics that are even more impressive than the original release. It reinvigorated the game with more than just a fresh lick of paint. Il est volé mon coeur. You are to stay where you are. Fumitsu Uada kept us all waiting for his latest masterpiece, and after nigh on a decade, it finally came to two machines for our enjoyment. But it would not be healthy without one more delay. Yes, it even managed to delay this very video. With such a fantastic and simply mesmerizingly wondrous title coming in at the 11th hour, it managed to find a way into the top 10 at the expense of Abzu as mentioned earlier. Now this is the title where you have to admire the sheer magnificence it holds and in spite of the game's obvious flaws, it still does nothing to diminish the masterpiece this is and the heritage where it stems from. From its incredibly dense world and manga style to the scale it creates from both yourself and the colossal Trico as your unlikely but entirely natural partnership grows and unwinds before you. The world may only have around two living objects most of the time but it is anything but lifeless. The hand-drawn animations are a thing of beauty, with the boy falling, swaying and even hurting himself incredibly naturally. Trico is even more ostentatious, with self-shadowing on his feathers, dithered fur on the head, modelled on a cat. It convinces you that it is a living, breathing entity, whether it is scratching at its feathers as they fall to the ground, or inquisitively surveying how to follow you, the animal fits into the world as organically as its movements across stray ledges or falling debris. The sense of wonderment would be absent if not for the sheer majesty on offer here, with stone ruins, towering rock faces and geometric water bodies that like everything in this world feels alive, purposeful and organic to its existence and adventure. A core style true to Oedasan and his trilogy of Eco to now, it's designed through subtraction but this feels anything but lacking. My full in-depth analysis is in the works so please stay tuned. Better late than never is very true here and a more than worthy number 9 in my list. Now the 8th slot game was The Division. Much was made of this game before it was ever more than a real-time target render. Living up to this has never been a good basis for public consumption, and sadly, it also paid the price. Now, even less so when your master is known for this type of bait-and-switch action, rightly or wrongly. But the young team held well under the strain. Now entitled Ubisoft Massive, they are also Swedish, real powerhouse in game studios, it appears, with DICE being the most prolific among them. Now, this is not to say that Massive sit in the shadow, as although it could and indeed does not live up to the promise reveal, it did not really let us down either. 
Canada. From its console roots, it also got a PC version added early into development after questions and requests had been made, and then surprisingly, this is the most accomplished in those aims. But all versions deliver a huge expansive Manhattan skyline to explore, destroy and admire with very minor sacrifices. This includes the game's mix of real-time and pre-computed GI that allows light to bounce onto alleyways, broken roofs and derelict shopping malls. This is of course always going to be the case as a fully real-time lighting model is difficult enough let alone within a dynamic city such as this. Including time of day, weather, it mixed up the splendour powered by the Snowdrop engine created for this very title. Its core abilities are vast, with an approximate light consumption, procedural destruction that allows holes to be blown through objects, wood to splinter, even car windscreens and doors affected by bullet holes accordingly. Now shooting through shutter doors or wooden slates allows light to seep through. The game's shader system allows decals to appear on people, floors and buildings alike. Snow builds up in storms and then melts during the sun. The flow of time and weather across the city is truly impressive and considering the complexity of the game's systemic core, it runs very impressively on all machines, with an accomplished multi-platform release, boosting it further with one of the first earlier third-party titles to use a dynamic resolution, this time on the Xbox One, volumetric lighting, among other additions, what it lacked for in its final delivery, it made up for in its technical accomplishment. What can you say about a game that looks like this from when you start? Insomniac have always made great looking titles and this includes the history of Ratchet titles on the PS2, which I compared to this game at launch. No game has ever come as close to looking like a Pixar or DreamWorks movie. All, from all angles, the game in play and animation or real time cutscenes, it wows you like few others ever can. Strong artistic direction, bright palette, lavish detail on animation and movement, it really fools you on its mere 30Hz rate greatly helped by the title's clean and high sample motion blur, which is possibly one of the best in real-time games. But it does not end here, with the game's crazy weapons, pyrotechnics and vast post-effects extras aided by a super clean IQ, for the most part, you cannot fail to be impressed. With a movie that came out at the same time, you struggle to see the difference between its pre-rendered scenes and this game's real-time ones. Not only have they created all this within a game that looks this good, but they never ease off filling the screen with all sorts of chaos, making it even harder to enjoy the wonder that they have created here. I yield! I yield! Please, don't hurt me! <sighs> With a full head-to-head -head still incoming, I have already covered the final code that released on discs last month with the Judgment demo and previous versions before, but then and now not much has changed from what is a gobsmacking title. It has some of the best hair in video games and unlike many others, this is used on all main characters and not just the hero or heroine. Using a combination of fins and real geometry, it allows natural movement both in gameplay and the game's sumptuous real-time cutscenes. Not everything is rosy in this Final Fantasy world though, with some IQ issues coming from said hair and a softness to the image on most platforms due to this aggressive TAA. But other issues aside, it more than makes up for this in other areas, and one of those is a lighting system that allows GI bounce, dynamic stencil shadows from torches across a vast open world with some of the best architecture design. It really wows you in play. All of this is delivered through a seamless streaming engine that allows both time of day and weather to unfold as you explore this sprawling landscape. Character models are incredibly detailed and well animated using both physics and keyframe animation blends. All in all, it is a truly remarkable game from the team's bespoke luminous engine, and it slides itself into the number 6 slot. Quantum Break is a game that truly impressed me when I finally had a chance to play and enjoy what it offered as I covered in my in-depth analysis at the time. Remedy Games have always pushed technology as far as the host platform allowed, and this was no exception. Incorporating one of the most convincing light solutions with direct and indirect sources, it enables some truly epic and cinematic moments that could have not been possible without it. Nearly 100% real-time throughout the title's tight and high production values that aside the reconstructed rendering nature of its pipeline, which did have some IQ issues in places, it never looked anything but stunning. It also deserves a praise for using the engine's vast technical abilities woven into the gameplay and abilities. Oh, 
not being a simple visual gimmick at all. Slowing, pausing, rewinding time never looked so convincing or impressive. Backed up with a gargantuan portfolio of particle alpha destruction and post effects, it is a technical powerhouse that excels also in its motion captured actors and well constructed digital avatars, laying claim to the most proficient use of the Xbox One hardware to date, in my opinion. Leaving all others in its Alan Wake. I didn't know where Sophia sent you or how to find you. You made it here. It's all that matters. Now the highest ranking Microsoft exclusive in my list and a truly great use of both Unreal Engine 4 and the Coalition's talent with this fourth entry in the series. Far more importantly and proudly I'm sure, my list. Now it's mixture of post-apocalyptic world, brilliant colour tone choices that include a great use of HDR if you have the right equipment, soft body and destructible physics, particle systems, high polygon counts, scripted engine moments and distinct design merge into a game that looks, feels and plays like a Gears of War title, specifically from the beginning when you think you're just going to get a remastered looking game and then it opens up being much bigger, badder and more bombastic than you've ever seen before with a great variety in its visual palette. The variety in scenery, lighting systems and real-time light and shadows including bounce light really amplify the horror and excitement the game delivers. It loses out a little by having many gorgeous but pre-rendered cinematics and the black screen that fades in between the two but a minor price to pay for such an impressive Xbox One stroke PC release. Using a dynamic resolution we are presented with one of the best performing titles this year with a nigh on locked 30 in single player and double that in multiplayer. The dynamic solution and temporal AA in the game give us one of the cleanest so far and on an S model console this is only refined further with the aforementioned HDR and improvements to the image quality and performance. And yes, I do have an upcoming article where I cover and praise the game in far more detail. Until then, it makes my number 4 slot. While well, my list this year could not be complete, as I have praised this game so much since it was released earlier in the year, no matter on console or PC, this is simply a magnificent piece of work from id Tech 6 and all involved, they should be very proud and I'm sure they are. The reasons for it appearing in my list and so high are multitudinous. Dynamic resolution scaling on both consoles maximises the resource with minimal to no detected degradation on IQ. Much of this comes from the intertwined SSAA-8TAA solution, complementing a post-effect suite of epic proportions. Per object motion blur with tracking delta of acceleration and direction, bokeh depth of field, translucency particle systems, silky animation across the game's vivid creature creations, all bathed in moody lighting and high quality assets make it the most enjoyable and striking ride into hell we're ever likely to get. But the icing on the cake is that all of this is generating on consoles at the intense 60Hz level and on more powerful PCs into the hundreds. It is a feat of both artistic and technical marvel in this generation and it stands proud in bronze position. It's bloody marvellous. There's a little twinge of guilt with me putting this team in second place two years on the bounce. DICE rarely fail to deliver in simply gorgeous, chaotic and impressive visuals. Even from this generation's start, Battlefield 4 managed to fill the most next-gen title from launch, even though it also appeared, albeit with heavy sacrifices, on last-gen machines. But with Battlefield 1 being a true ground-up now-gen iteration creation, it builds on the Frostbite engine's base to its best showing by far yet. With last year's Battlefront being one of the first titles to publicly push the photogrammetry techniques that help create what is, what with the best physically based material shaders in the business. Stepping back into war torn Europe in the early 20th century has done little to degrade these assets as they are now even better and varied. Clever reuse of these from areas in Battlefront is both resourceful and convincing, giving us expansive views across the Arabian desert and the moonlight or scorching sun, mud-filled trenches, destroyed villages or crumbling stately homes and dense jungles. The range, detail and destruction on offer is nothing short of eye-watering. It loses none of its flair from explosion alpha effects, almost trademark particle systems, light and extras, physics-based destruction and animation, all wrapped up with amazingly clean IQ from its TAA solution and better resolution options on all consoles. 
Now, thanks to the Pro Mid-Season update, the DICE updates console players with the option of super sampling and even pushing towards 4K resolutions and better performance, which is possibly the game's only Achilles heel in multiplayer, unless you have a sufficient PC, or at least the Pro version, which is much better. It also deserves special mention for actually having a multiplayer game that hardly cuts back on the visual niceties at all. But nothing should distract from the best work the Swedish-based powerhouse have made here with an engine that now rules EA titles and nearly ruled my 2016 top slot. I tell you're a goddamn genius. Hear that, Nate? Genius. Yeah, yeah. So the number one slot is no surprise. I'm sure many are not shocked to see what snatched the top slot. And for me, this was a really tough battle to decide in some ways. But once reminding yourself and re-admiring this game again, as I have for all the titles featured here across PC and console alike, it is a simple choice to make. This does not come down to one segment, but for the reason Naughty Dog gain the praise and admiration that they do, it is the sum of the game's parts add up to a fortune that only Nathan Drake himself could find. The list is too monumental for me to cover in depth here, but I did the best I could at launch with my in-depth analysis. Link is on screen and below. It just does so many things right and better than many others. Admiration aside, animation is a given here as few come close to matching the sheer breadth of movement, fluidity, range and organic construction we see at play here. Weighted from limbs, joints and articulated through physical interaction and inverse kinematic physics, it presents the most lifelike and seamless blended movements across the game's vast cast. The fact that enemies and PC all seem to have an equal amount of high work is a sign of the detail they delve into and the dedication it must take. Ultimately, the width of the engine scale is what really takes your breath away as you visit the broadest range of locales yet, from moonlight orphanages, rain-soaked jungles, elegant castle grounds, rural Scottish mountains, or even sun-drenched beaches with water that bounces, dissipates, distorts, and absorbs light with remarkable accuracy. The tricks they pull off and interchange in play is what allows us to deliver so many jaw-dropping moments you forget that a £200 console is pulling this off at a native 1080p and even reduced slightly to 60 FPS in multiplayer, leaves little doubt the engineers, artists, animators, etc. are at the top of their game and leveraging the most from the hardware. I also just how much time, money, blood, sweat and tears have been spent in creating this. It's also the consistency of the experience. No area, texture, character or even rock pool looks to have not received the same love as any other. The flow from one sequence to another into and through and out of real-time cutscenes that leaves you wondering when the control is given back. It leaves a lasting impression on anybody that plays it with a cohesive, immersive and fundamentally magnificent piece of work that stands proud as the best the team have ever created on that basis. Well, at least for now anyway. A thoroughly deserved winner amongst a year of champions. It's the final treasure I'm sure Nate and crew were really after. Come on, guys. Right? Oh, scusi. You have something I want, and you're going to give it to me. Really? Well, I'm flattered, but I'm afraid I'm spoken for. Oh, if you'll excuse me. I'm not in the mood for games. Yeah, I knew it. Now even though the year has ended, I do have more articles, videos and analysis to come on my channel and website. So please, like if you did and dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to support the channel and my work, as to be this good takes ages, and to continue I need you. Share where you can and please leave your thoughts and top games for the year below, or contact me via Twitter. Now I will catch you on the next one, but please, if you didn't like this list, or if you did, I would love to hear what you guys think of the top 10 or your top 5. Please leave all your thoughts and feedback below, I always like to talk to you. You guys and girls take care, and I'll see you on the next one.